Welcome to Push To Be More with me, your host, Matt Edmondson. This is a brand new podcast, a show that talks about the stuff that makes life work. And to help me do just that, right here at the launch, I thought of no one better than, to, than the right Reverend Ian Finch uh, to get on the <laughs> podcast with me. Uh, my good friend Ian from Mando about how to create a sustainable future for your company, uh, how when you are better, everything is better. And we're gonna be talking about his desire to be better today than he was yesterday. I'm loving this music, by the way. Oh yes. Uh, the show notes and transcript from my conversation with Ian are available on our website, pushtobemore.com. Uh, on our website, you can also sign up for our newsletter and each week we will email you these links uh, from the show, uh, the transcripts, all that kind of good stuff automatically direct to your inbox, totally free, totally amazing. So make sure you go to pushtobemore.com. Now this episode is brought to you by Orion Media, which helps entrepreneurs and business leaders set up and run their own successful podcast. Oh yes. Uh, you know what? I have found running my own podcast to be really rewarding. This is actually my third, Ian. Uh, no, fourth. Let me count right. My fourth podcast. Podcasting opens doors to amazing people like nothing else I've ever seen. And I've built networks, made friends, and I've had a platform to champion my customers, my team, and my suppliers. And I think just about every entrepreneurial business leader, honestly, should have a podcast just because of the huge impact it's had on my own businesses. And of course, that sounds great in, rally, um, in theory, let me start that sentence again. Uh, but in reality, there is the whole problem of setting up distribution, getting the tech right, knowing what the right podcast strategy is, having really funky theme tunes like our one, and all that sort of good stuff. So you see, I love talking to people, yeah, but not all the other stuff. So Orion Media takes it off my plate. I do what I'm good at, and they brilliantly take care of the rest. So if you're wondering if podcasting is a good marketing strategy for you, your business, then do connect with them. Orionmedia.com, that's A-U-R-I-O-N media.com. And we will, of course, link to them on the podcast website at pushtobemore.com as well. So all of that said, let's talk about you, Ian. Ian is the CEO of Mando agency. CEO is a very posh title, isn't it? Uh, Mando focuses on engineering positive change in organizations through specialist product development teams. Ian is also a husband, a dad, a mental health advocate, a big fan of outdoor pursuits, and a yoga devotee. And it's probably fair to say, Finch, a big uh, Liverpool football club fan as well. Indeed. Welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Uh, and and three podcasts in, I, I think you're ready for TV. Yeah. <laughs> like, you've got the X Factor voice. I'm excited. I'm ready for the judges. To yeah, come yeah, out. yeah. I'm, I'm loving it. This is yeah, yeah. It's brilliant, isn't it? I used to um, I used to have on my LinkedIn bio that um, I was a frustrated. Uh, frustrated radio to dj wannabe so i started podcasting instead <laughs> <laughs> oh well I, I think you're well past radio too i, I think you're on the yeah, uh, yeah the music awards uh, you know <laughs> we've got, we got eurovision coming to liverpool actually we have pretty soon yeah, I think, yeah. you, know, you just need a handful more of these to go viral and I think <laughs> that would be awesome wouldn't it yeah yeah uh, so yeah, if you're listening uh, to this uh, Mr. Eurovision Song Contest people, uh, then both Ian and I will quite happily host together. It'd be, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be quite good fun. So, good yeah, yeah, no, it's awesome. Uh, thank you for your kind words, by the way. You are way too oh, kind. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just very kind of you. Uh, I've got a really good friend of mine called Tony, actually. He tells me that I've got... <laughs> he always tells me I've got a good face for radio. So... <laughs> It's just yeah, one so of those. I, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so here we are, number one, episode number one. Thank you for being the guinea pig uh, and oh, being on the very first show. Yeah, it's great, man. Now we've done podcasts together before. We've got, I've got an e-commerce podcast. Yeah. You've been on that, and I thought actually this one's aimed a bit wider, a bit more at sort of leaders and entrepreneurs and stuff. And I thought you'd be great to talk about this. So let's start off. Uh, I said, uh, you know, you're the CEO of Mando. Just tell us a little about, uh, tell us a little bit about Mando Agency and what it does. So yeah, sure. Mando is a digital agency, uh, um, but we're a very kind of technology centric and perhaps more like an IT consultancy, and so. 
it's very much managed services, professional services, consultancy services in that digital change space. So we will run your digital estate, uh, optimize it, evolve it, bring in new technologies, do systems integration. So we only have a few programs that work every year in a relatively lightweight customer base. Yeah. It's just that we do a lot yeah. <laughs> for, for those customers, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mandates a year for each of those customers. So it's, yeah, it's very much in that, that um, strategic consultancy and, and engineering kind of place. And it's fair to say, I mean, that all sounds... In, uh, if I'm honest with you, from my point of view, it sounds really impressive. It sounds a bit nightmarish when you're doing that much for one client, <laughs> right? Um, in one sense, but it's, um, see, I'm from e-commerce. You don't do that much for clients. You take that money and you ship them products, right? Uh, but so it's very different in some respects to what you guys are doing. And um, yeah, yeah. I know you've had really long-term successful client relationships because you, you mm, guys mm. do that super well, right? And you, you care for people really well. But it's fair to say that on your journey, you did always start out as you are right now i mean you know the early Very days true. uh were Very not true. like what they are is that fair enough yeah absolutely I mean, we've been going a long time i'm 25 years in um yeah uh, as of as of september actually um uh, and in the early days like like any startup you you get work really where you can um particularly when you're you're 21 <laughs> and you're figuring out <laughs> what's going on in life as well. So, yeah, you know, yeah. there wasn't, there wasn't this big strategic plan. You know, if I, if I did a startup tomorrow, I'd do it very differently and a lot more focused, but, um, but yeah, we learned our, we learned our trade. I mean, we set up pre Google, um, pre Amazon, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and so in fact it would have been, yeah. Um, so the web and digital was, was a wild west really. Everyone was just kind of figuring it out as we went along. And so it's very, a lot of trial and error. Um, and very design centric, um, very few rules in those, in those days. It, it really was kind of let's experiment, see what happens. Um, mm. Some ways I miss those days because, you know, the, the creativity had a bit more space to breathe, whereas what, what comes with uh, the evolution of, of the web and people's expectations is within that experience space, the need for familiarity uh, and therefore intuition comes to the fore much more people just want things to work in the same way that makes yeah, sense yeah. you know and if you're using your your tv it's really annoying that the apple fast forward isn't as good as netflix is why just <laughs> there's just good just copy that you know and yeah. and so yeah I, I don't want it to be an experimental fast forward with different types of like yeah. um button combinations i just want it to be like because that works uh, and yeah. so but the challenge is keeping that familiarity and making sure in our world that you know, ultimately we want things to be better, faster and cheaper for our clients, mm. which means things are easier, more intuitive and user friendly and, and, and just easy to click and say yes to for their clients. Yeah. Uh, and so there's very prescribed, you know, prescribable, perhaps is more accurate route to make things so much more simple from a, a user's perspective. But that's simple is a critical bit because it's, mm. it's very easy to be simplistic it's actually quite difficult to be simple it's actually mm. very complicated to make yeah. things simple because yeah. you've got yeah. to do so much in the back end so that's why we're in that space uh in the engineering because it's all well and good oh it should be like this my job's done says the person that's done the diagram and yeah and then, <laughs> then there's like two thousand man days or person days of, of development yeah. to actually configure all the systems to allow that very simple click to happen yeah, no, fair play. Yeah. So it's, it's you, you've, I mean, you do some great stuff now, Mando, and you've obviously started 25 years ago. So congratulations, by the way, on your 25th year. That's quite impressive. Um, you started out by getting work wherever you could. Uh, and it's fair to say now you've got some fairly well-known and significant clients. I don't know if you can Indeed. mention who they are. I don't want to mention Yeah, them. sure. So the clients, I mean, we're really proud of the client base. And so JCB. Mm -hmm. who are a great customer, uh, relatively recent, so the last year or so, but we're, we're getting really well with them, doing some great stuff. Um, we keep British Red Cross ticking over, uh, mm -hmm. making sure they can get the donations and, and mm -hmm. performing. I'm really proud of the work we do in utilities, you know, and so mm -hmm. we're running electricity Northwest or SSE or UU mm -hmm. and um, a load of other three letter acronyms that I could go, <laughs> but you know, when <laughs> storm season happens, yeah, people want to know when they're going to like, get electric back, you mm -hmm. know, and, and they, 
need to be on their mobile because there's mm. no web connection. So making the sites performance, scalable, mobile friendly, easy to use. You know, we're very much in that space where we support vulnerable customers. And that's really close to our heart in what mm. we do. Um, and so I work with um, CAP, for example, Christians Against Poverty. Um, I mean, that ticks a lot of boxes on a kind of yeah. heart level that they, we're helping them address a more sizable market than they can currently address and working yeah. with them to transform their business. I won't go into too much detail, but their target market is the most vulnerable in society. Yeah. And we're getting out of major poverty, but what's wonderful about CAP particularly is that they don't just fix the fact that you've stumbled into 2000% interest, horrible loan shark yeah, yeah, scenario. Yeah. But there might be other issues where you got there in the first place. And so it's this holistic view. And so mm. when you can help an organization that will benefit society, mm. will, will transform, you know, and that's probably an extreme example, but we work for university superannuation scheme, the biggest pension mm. fund in the country. And they've got, 450,000 pensioners who have paid their dues yeah. and are worried about a recession and yeah. and so on. And we create a system where where they can get time information. They can mm -hmm. model what their pension is going to look like a year or two from now. And so, yeah, really proud of the work and really proud of the clients that we work with. That's awesome, man. But I, do you remember then, um, I mean, there's some, <laughs> some pretty big clients. You didn't obviously didn't start off uh, working with the British Red Cross, right? So I'm guessing that there was sort of step. What was what was the turning point? Do you remember your sort of first major client where you thought, goodness me, we're we're stepping out into a zone here? Yeah, there's probably two or three examples. It was more, but really big ones that come to mind. Um, we're, we're about just just coming up to the end of our first year, and we picked up like a one page website here and a bit of a brochure where there and I did a logo and so on. Mm. And then we, we did our first competitive pitch for the Roy Castle Lung Cancer Foundation um, mm. when it first opened. And we bust a gut to deliver it. I remember doing three or nine in a row before the 6 a.m. <laughs> deadline when wow. when Cliff Richard came in on Breakfast News and BBC and clicked go and Internet Explorer 3 and up popped the website on national oh, television. Wow. We're like, and it worked. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know like, like matchsticks pricking up your eyes and the IT manager faints and we're like, okay, good. Um, you know, that, that was a step change deal because, you know, contextually, mm. that was 20% of our revenue that year wow. uh, and it all came in the end when we were i hadn't been paid for three months <laughs> yeah i remember yeah. you know i don't know if anyone is old enough to relate to this but um they gave all the assets on a zip disk and we're like oh wow we haven't got a zip drive oh, wow. <laughs> so we had to go and buy a zip drive to get the assets we're like, oh. you know it was so hand to mouth um but that was our first competitive pitch it was also a big brand so we pr the hell out of it Every yeah. time there's a picture of Roy Castle and his trumpet, there's me, me and Matt, my business partner, at the time going, oh, we did the website. Yeah. Um, the, and because that was visible, um, that actually got us noticed, not just by potential clients, but potential staff. And it was mm. a direct consequence of seeing that, but we then uh, came to contact with our correct director, mm. who, who then worked with us the next few years. Um, around that time as well, we got, Mersey Television, and it, again, people need to be old for this, but remember Brookside? Yeah, yeah. Four rounds of Holly Oaks. Yeah. Um, well, we did that in in Mac Media Flash, if anyone remembers that. Oh, we used to plug yeah, into yeah. browsers and got an interactive BAFTA nomination for it, and then we were set because on a new technology that was experiential with award winning that had national coverage, then the floodgates start to open, but. Uh, that then got us into contact with Sony, Signosis, mm -hmm. who were a neighbor at the time, who um, we did a very minor website, I think Panzer Tank Elite, that well-known game from uh, 23 <laughs> years ago. Um, but because of that, we got in, we then got into that gaming world of all the product mm -hmm. managers knew each other, and we ended up doing Final Fantasy website, and we did stuff for Capcom, oh, wow. Street Fighter, and we had a whole era, we did loads of media and games. And, and so, so I think the key learning really is you one unlock in a vertical where you just catch your imagination mm. can can transform your business. And we, we went from, I think we had, well, yeah, two staff by the time um, Roy Castle went live. We had three mm. to two. <laughs> 
then by the time we had Brookside Live, it was 10. By the time we'd done a million games, we were 30. And the whole thing happened in kind of three years. Yeah. Um, then the dot-com bubble burst and we, and we kind of just ticked it over for a bit. I think the other, the other step change came having just kept the lights on during a difficult time, kind of post the recession, just in digital. Mm. We developed our technology and we were working with other agencies and we were doing the back end and we kind of had this more balance between design and uh, and architecture. And then the next step change deal occurred when we did a, um, uh, an e-learning system. And three things happened. One, it was a tour de force in terms of visuals. It was mm. complete state-of-the-art. It was not form-based learning. It was this immersive, almost gamification mm edutainment um, and all those phrases that came out afterwards. <laughs> Crucially though, we, we partnered with other technology and mm. uh, the diagnostic engine that sat behind all the learning, we actually had another uh, company produce yeah. and we saw, ah, right, amazing experience design with best of breed technology. There's a win. Yeah. Um, and actually in, in the agency space, we then quite soon after ditched our own technology and started working with bigger systems okay and with bigger systems came bigger clients because the client didn't want mando at the time 30 odd people in liverpool's cms that had 100 mm. clients they wanted to go to market and go we want x or y or z platform and then that because that's safe and it's microsoft backed and um and so, but a client that wants that kind of safety with that kind of budget has budget for other things as well. I and mean, mm. it took us away from some of the smaller work and we got into this kind of more business critical yeah. uh, engineering space. And, and it was that turning point of partnering with technology that then opened the floodgates to work with United Utilities, which we still do 14 years later, um, Vodafone, Jones Lang LaSalle, Bentley and and um, talk to it's just all the brands came from a result of working that technology and it took us up a level mm. um, and that core learning continues to this day you know you have best of breed tech with great visual design experience and uh, but then you need the systems and so in our world people who can do the tech in the systems are massive fifty thousand person offshores or systems yeah. integrators and they're design maybe is a bit lacking and the team's a bit disparate because we're all over the world yeah and the people who are, are integrated quite boutique don't typically have the processes to be able to cope with the support element and so we think well there's a unique point of differentiation for us that mm. within a certain mid-market boundary the fact that onshore we can keep the systems running with bulletproof iso itil driven processes you know everyone who's working on your account and it's going to be experientially and strategically driven mm. that though that kind of um, key principles all under one roof is really compelling because it, it makes yeah. it better, faster, cheaper and you got and you can really grow with a customer at a period of time. The customers really appreciate that. Yeah. No, and that's obviously what you guys have done very well over the last few years. Right. And what you continue to do well in. But I'm I, I mean, I know you, Ian, so I know the answer to this question, uh, but it's um, I mean, that journey, as exciting as it sounds, it's fair to say, has not been all sunshine and rainbows, has it? It's there's there's been a there's been a few trips along the way, a few challenges. Um, so we call this podcast Push to Be More, right? So yes. question to you then is where have you learnt or where have you had to push and that's had a big, massive impact on you, sort of challenges you've had to overcome? Yeah, well, well two, I think, Two or three come to mind. Firstly, I mentioned it before when the dot com bubble burst. Yeah, um, it was followed quickly by nine eleven, and uh, five months earlier, we would raised half a million and moved into nine thousand square foot of office space because we we're utterly convinced we we're going to be a hundred staff within a year, uh, wow. which then didn't happen. <laughs> wow! So it's yeah. like you know, I think pivot is a fully overused word in 2022 but man the pivot <laughs> we're like <laughs> right <laughs> okay in clark and well alone in london five thousand people got made redundant and they all went oh what's the most interesting stuff media and games what are we doing media and games 200 miles away in liverpool um we had stared into an empty office it was never going to be filled and we're like, okay now what we're we gonna do so 
um, you know, that, that's when we we really doubled down on the technical partner side of things to, to yeah. ad agencies. And the, and the spend went from digital to ad agency because um, it was tried and trusted from a strategic perspective, but they didn't know how to do the tech. And so we're like, well, let's concentrate on that and, you know, just yeah. study the shit. We need some new markets because there's... Uh, media and games isn't going to do it um sublet the space <laughs> you know all those kind of things um you know which we did mm. which we did and then but we're not as close to the customers and then the customers which we had you know with a great respect if i did one 20 page accountant website i did 50 and white with a blue logo with a differentiation <laughs> point of personal professional service and excellence is our value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, <laughs> um, and you know, we turn the lights no. we turn the lights on. I remember going on holiday and coming back and saying to the business part of the time, it's like, I'm so bored. <laughs> I'm so I'm so bored working and I think our staff are because mm. working on projects we don't like for money we can't afford to live on um for, for for people who don't particularly get on with <laughs> work we don't believe in this is this is mm. you know look, i'm still in my 20s this is this is too no mm. <laughs> uh, you know i'm a business partner for yeah i feel the same way actually we're stuck in a rut and um so we had this real kind of moment like right okay it was three or four years ago shake it off man yeah. let's just get that, that that spirit back what is it we love it was it was a design and it was a problem solving and 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 let's get in charge of it again let's um mm. you know really go for what we want or forget it yeah um go big or go home you might call it and um and i um, by getting that kind of gritty about it people who were with you were loving it and yeah people that had died inside themselves were like nah i'm done I'm you know yeah. and I actually i know uh, we shrunk by a third in, wow. in the next six months um but we did only kind of lose one person practically the rest kind of moved on it was just mm. from the sheer shake of us getting yeah. the grip of the business again yeah um uh, and the last person to move was was a salesperson which is an interesting choice when you're shrinking to get rid of sales but actually yeah. we needed to change the strategy and so i actually took over sales uh, and, and and the key principle was get the people with a problem in yeah. front of the people who have a an ability to solve problems or the people yeah. need to work with the people who do the work and so i'm going to treat sales more like project management and facilitation yeah. rather than in inverted commas peddling anything yeah, yeah. Uh, and and that worked a treat that really really worked and it kind of changed the way we looked at business development uh, as we solve problems it, mm. uh, we're consultants mm. we don't to sell we don't business develop and then these guys build mm. we're consultants mm. and i still say that now and we're still doing training yeah. on it now because it's one of those kind of never-ending journeys of just yeah. becoming more and more consultative but that that was a real change that happened then the next one i mentioned before where we started partnering with technology mm. uh, uh, and then coming back or to more the present day, there's probably two key things that have happened. One is we went quite vertical in, in terms of our market proposition, particularly around regulated industries. And, mm. uh, and we do really well um, when we're serving a known customer base, making it optimal for that customer base and reducing yeah. the cost to serve those customers, mm -hmm. which is very much for the IT consultancy cost reduction kind of mm -hmm. side of what we do ultimately. Or, you know, we have much more stringent metrics than this, but ultimately, if you came down to it, we increase customer satisfaction, we reduce the cost to serve those customers. That, that's yeah. uniform across yeah. the, the customer base is the most baseline met metrics. And being really clear about, about a proposition helps your qualification, helps your bids, it gets you mm. a homogeneity within your types of customers you work with, it allows you to build intellectual mm. property uh, uh, and just build that competence um and then and then probably the last real pertinent thing is um we were still have a kind of good quarter not so good quarter or a great year and an okay year and getting off that i wouldn't call it a roller coaster maybe a sine wave um or, or and going how, how can we get that consistent growth and 
that's very difficult in our space and i think generally in consultancy space um because when you're project orientated yeah because you put this big picture together you win the project and you do the project and then everyone has oh <laughs> kind of feeling yeah and then the oh, can, can last a few months no matter what so you always get mm. this drop and yeah you can put a support agreement in place but really changing our marketing and uh, and our, our value proposition and our internal training as well it's quite a seismic mm. overhaul of the agency to become much more aligned to customers that want to go on a journey and continuously mm. improve and continually invest in their platform their digital estate and be, become ever more digital first that's when you can really build momentum really get under the skin of an organization yeah. and and be able to project further out what your revenue forecasts are mm-hmm. you know this year for the first time in 25 i know what we're going to do by march year end of yeah i know 60 percent of what we're going to do by the following march and that that's a paradigm shift for us in terms of right. our history so it's fair i mean there's a lot there right i mean there's <laughs> There's a lot of learning uh, and a lot of challenges that you've faced and that you've worked through and you, some of them you've mentioned and now you're sort of faced with with a sort of this paradigm shift. Um, originally, we were going to call this podcast when we get retainers or die trying or something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we've subsequently changed, changed the title. So is that, um, is that sort of, it's almost like your, your sort of, you stripped the business back to these fundamental basics of when you were up in the in that sort of yeah. little office on London Road, right? Yeah. So yeah, we've evolved considerably, and you know, in terms of that particular initiative, yeah, you know, you have to you have to have listened to a Fifty Cent album to even get the reference. In fairness, like get rich or dry trying, but get retainers or die trying. The um, so it didn't translate that well. I mean, people are looking at a white middle aged uh, uh, IT guy going, "It's okay, white. We're thinking a different name." <laughs> but you get my drift. We, yeah. You know, we are going to do this. Come a hell or high water, we're not going to play around with it. Mm. Um, and one of the things that I, I, I have learned slowly slowly too slowly is sometimes um change is so big and so fundamental you know not not everyone's gonna come with you and okay. that has to be okay yeah uh, and if you do it right it can be a really empowering experience you know i, I once had an exit interview with someone that went i really <laughs> really see clearly where you're going and i don't want any of it so it's time to leave i'm like that's the best exit interview ever because it means I've been really clear. It means you've been really intentional and we can just shake each other's hand and wish each other well. You know, so I was really proud of that because like we've communicated this really well. This has not just been a slow deterioration. You know, we're going, we're going here for these reasons and here's what was going to happen. This is what it means for everyone. And people go brilliant. People go, not for me. You know, I yeah. think that's great. Yeah. You know, and that's remarkable, I'll, really. Yeah. Yeah. And it hasn't always been like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So, so really. you know, <laughs> so what's one of the learning points there is that you just cannot over communicate yeah. stuff, you know, and yet so often you think I've, I've emailed about it. I've done a company stand up. I've sent, uh, I've put a blog out on the company internet. I've talked to all the key people and then someone goes, Oh, we're doing that now, and you're just like, "What?" You know, you know. Well, I could just, I could just, just let my shoulders slump and just cry over my cup of tea, and <laughs> no one understands me. Or, or I could go, "This is the job." Mm. <laughs> you know, I may feel like I've done a song and dance and an email, and, and I, you know, an expressive mime about it, and a, and a video, and 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 talk to everybody individually at the water cooler about how. And they still don't get it. And actually, it happens so often mm. and happens so repeatedly over history. And we work with customers who are brilliant and the left arm doesn't know what the right arm's doing. And you go, this mm. is like a human issue. Yeah. So I could probably give myself a break. I could probably be a bit more gracious to everyone else and go, we just go again. Yeah. We just go again. You know, and in terms of, I think where you're coming from in this in this podcast series is 
I don't think there's any greater real headline than we go again. Yeah, <laughs> we get. <laughs> you no, know? it's true, right? We get it. We dust ourselves down, and we 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 keep going, right? Yeah, just... and because some stuffs work really well, some mm. stuffs worked a bit and could be optimized. Some stuffs just a nightmare. In which case, you go. He got the light bulb wrong a thousand times before he got it right, and he didn't yeah. stop. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, the so the, the stuff you can own around strategy, and we tried something that didn't work, and that's okay. Mm. You know, learning there is fail forward and fail fast. Yeah, Just don't keep failing. You know, yeah, doing it once and it works fine. Tweak it, do it twice and it didn't work. Mm. Do it three times. It's like, are you kidding me? We just we yeah. just learn this now and tweak. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't always need to be a wholesale change. It needs to be a tweak. And even that needs explaining because mm. I think the vast majority of humans live in an either or world. We do this or we do that. Right. But in business transformation and change, in digital specifically, we do this and we do that. So let's live in an and world, not in an either or world. Mm. And and everything's just a micro adjustment. You know, it's hilarious when people want to flick to an agile delivery methodology um, rather than a, uh, an old school waterfall methodology. And they go, right, let's do agile. And let's spec it to death before we start because we want to get agile right. Like, <laughs> no, no. Miss the point. Let, Miss the let, point. Let's start yeah, yeah, yeah. to iterate as we go along and have a cadence where we go whatever it is. Every two weeks. Right, here's where we are. What have we learned? What are we going to do next? All right, here's yeah. where we are. And, you know, and, and but that takes time and training because I think yeah. that from the schooling system up where you just get it right, have some incompetence, do the thing, yeah. get marked for it. Okay, yeah. now go on to the next assessment. But in yeah. the real world, you go try and fail, try and fail, try and fail. The creative yeah. process is endlessly trying and failing. You write a song, yeah. it's like, that chorus doesn't work, that chorus doesn't work, that chorus, yeah. no, no, the chorus works. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't stop trying, and it's not like you've done a completely different song. Mm. Even if it ends up differently, you've iterated mm. your way there. And, it's and interesting so it is you say life. that. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, because I think one of the things that um, you do well when you're a kid is you fail well. You just think about a kid learning to walk. They fail well. They don't even think about it. There's no... There's no ego involved. There's no, you know, there's no self-esteem issues when they fall over. There might be a slight frustration, but they figure it out. And I think yeah. one thing that school does is it teaches you to fail badly. Uh, and we we carry that through, right? And, and one of the things that I've noticed with entrepreneurs like yourself is your ability to take failure almost within your stride and not worry about it and just, and just relentlessly keep going, which I think... Yeah. Um, is peculiar in a lot of ways to entrepreneurs and leaders. I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, and it's we we did some some training about twenty months ago. Um, we got some sales training in, and then COVID hit, and we turned the sales training into comms training more generally. Mm. Uh, how to use a screen. You know, how, you know how to set an agenda that finishes yeah. five minutes before the hour because they've no doubt got another video call that starts at the yeah, hour yeah, and yeah. really, really basic stuff like that. But then, when you actually get into the concept of agenda setting, and you get a bit further into it, you go, "Well, I can set an agenda," but the word agenda that plays out in multiple different ways, and actually, people are coming to that agenda with an agenda. Yeah, and their agenda could be driven by an argument at breakfast with their spouse mm. <laughs> or some other trigger. Um, but maybe agenda is a bit of a harsh word, but it, it, it led to us going, people don't contribute in these meetings because they're scared to look bad. Why are they scared to look yeah. bad? Because it's part of failure. People are scared to fail. Well, why are they scared mm. to fail? I don't think we've got a culture. I think we embrace failure. We, we, you can say it, but if people don't feel it, I'm like, oh, okay, well, let, mm. let's do a session on handling failure. And it's really interesting what you say about the entrepreneur thing because I was on that session like the rest of people in the business. I was like, with the greatest respect, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, well, of course, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, and, and there's 50 people going, oh, it's life changing. Oh, I filmed so one, yeah. And I'm like, mm. oh, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. right. I've got some learning to do here because I live in this permanent place of, 
failure iterate failure iterate success yeah, yeah. iterate a bit more now it's a failure and everything i do is public yeah every failure i make 50 people go yeah you failed on <laughs> <laughs> well done boss yeah, yeah yeah you know because because entrepreneurs fail in public because mm. You know, particularly when you've got staff, you don't end up doing the work. Other people are doing some yeah. of the decisions you make about a direction in business. Mm. Other people are doing it, but it's still you that's failed to deliver yeah. to that client. Yeah. Um, or, or the culture's not worked, or you get staff feedback, and it's like, oh, you think that? Oh, you won't be needing this anymore. You know? and, um, <laughs> but you can't take You just have to go. All feedback is valuable. All feedback is meant well, unless it's not. In which yeah. case let's put a bit of sermon in but your assumption is it's meant well for the may yeah. i ask for it and i get it but i can't you have to see failure um, you have to see a challenge and 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 your failings and when you run a business where well, you see all the bits you hate about your character played out culturally as well as the good bits <laughs> as well you know and there's no hiding right there's no hiding. Oh, no. and it's the most exhilarating and terrifying experience probably outside yeah. of your kids up where the same thing happens um the uh, <laughs> you just live in this world of constantly failing publicly yeah and accepting responsibility for it and then you forget that most people don't yeah <laughs> most people learn at school how to be great at generic stuff gccs then focus a little bit more at a levels yeah. and focus a bit more at university then do a job that matches a university training and then get really good at a job mm. so we live in a place where actually failure is getting eliminated all the time mm. and then the nutty founder entrepreneur comes along and go hey let's experiment let's try something over there you know and um, freaks everybody out yeah, yeah yeah not strictly true because <laughs> you know i'm not like let's have experimental code practices that maybe aren't as secure as others no you know let, let's let's learn mm. the, the basics but can we optimize that? Do we need to build yeah. ourselves? Could we partner with technology? And you're constantly nibbling around the edges to try and, um, and it's your job to go, can we do that quicker? Yeah, yeah really. Is that actually true? Mm. Yeah, I found it, you know, like the classic thing. I've just searched on Google for 30 seconds and I found this and you've done it for 30 years, but what about this? And they're like, I hate you, but then occasionally <laughs> they're like, oh yeah, you're right. I didn't see that. And you're like, yeah. You didn't see it because you're utterly brilliant at what you do. Yeah. And actually, I saw it because I'm completely ignorant of what you do. And therefore, I'm not as closed minded. And so mm. I've learned to Im the older I get, the more stupid questions I ask. Yeah, the, the more forgive me. And they're intentional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because the better you get without people stretching you, Mm. The, the, the the closer the blinkers are because mm. you're going deeper and i think part of the joy and part of the job but also the part of you've really got to handle culturally is constantly going is there something else is there something else is there something else have we thought about have we thought about without winding everyone else up and dismissing mm. what their value is and and, and so we constantly trying to get that tension yeah between best practice and is there more mm. Well, there's a lot there, right? And I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's it's a really sort of fascinating uh, trait that business leaders have, this constant drive. And it, have you ever read the book um, Black Box Thinking? I have not. No. So this is a, a book I think everybody should read. It's a Black Box Thinking by a guy called Matthew, I can't even remember his name, Matthew Syed, I think it is. Okay. And he, he in the book, he talks about how to deal with failure and he contrasts the US medical industry, which cannot abide the word failure because it means lawsuit, with the airline industry, which goes failure, black box, that means learning something so we don't crash in, you know, again, right? Yeah. And he contrasts yeah, yeah, yeah. these these two things and yeah. it's fascinating and very insightful. So highly recommend Okay, no, I'll definitely read that. Yeah, yeah, check it out. So business aside, because business sounds like fun and full on and a pain in the arse all at the same time, which is probably the testimony of most business leaders, right? All of the above, yeah. But it, I think particularly in digital, it's, you know, it's 25, well, no, it's not, is it? It's 30 to 35 years old since a mm. non-linear hyperlink got created, um, which compared to architecture, which is several thousand year old, there's, mm. there's a few more standards, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and so, while that makes it challenging, it also means it 
every day is different and it's yeah. exciting you know and we can evolve further but the human issues don't don't change um but yeah it's a challenge which yeah I'm sure the next question would be, how do you handle that in the rest of life as well? Uh, well, yeah, we cool. could we could go that route. Uh, yeah, what do you do to sort of stay on top? What do you do to charge your batteries? What do you do to be um, the push to be more? It's that kind of what fills your tank kind of thing. I'm curious to know how you how you recharge Finch. Yeah, um, that's been a very topical part of my life over the last um, couple of years uh, because I think the older you get. Um, Maybe it's me. I think it's more generic, though. You know, the uh, things just start hurting in your 40s. <laughs> I think particularly if you've worked in IT like this, you know, getting more and more stress and, you know, coming over a desk and your tem- hamstrings are getting tight. And um, But I think you end up carrying stuff and adrenaline and energy maybe in my case nervous energy in your 20s and 30s carries you through mm. um and i remember getting a bit of advice years ago going well that's all well and good but once you're doing 25 hours work in every 24 hour period where's that go yeah you know you can't just keep doing more and mm. i think there's periods in life i think particularly in your 20s where you, you're just accumulating knowledge and, and, mm. and actually you're not as good mm. because you haven't done it before and so things take longer and then, you know, your 30s, you start getting a better sense where you're. And then in your 40s, you realize actually less is way more. <laughs> and, and I've actually allowed myself to see part of my job is thinking clearly. Mm. And ridiculously, with the benefit of hindsight, for years, I thought that, well, the job is doing. Yeah. And, you know, I'm thinking frankly while driving and getting dictaphone notes reading on the toilet <laughs> you know dictaphoning on the toilet because that's where the ideas come thinking on holidays and then come, and actually i've allowed myself to spend some of my working day thinking mm. uh, now, part of that is because i trust myself more my thinking's good mm. with this incompetence uh part of it is a natural part of you know i i don't do the work anymore i, I delegate yeah. manage and lead and direct um so I think creating space for thinking is important and um, it needs to be a bit more holistic than that, you know. And so some of the work I did kind of really condensed life down into into what we call four rooms. Uh, and so there's the emotional room, yeah. the, the physical room, the, um, uh, the mental room and, and the spiritual room. And actually really dwelling on where am I at in those four paradigms was really interesting. Um, mm. So mentally, I'm continually challenged. I'm always firing and actually I'm always learning something new. So I'm probably yeah. in a pretty good place mentally. I make good decisions and my job is making decisions and my prepared. Physically, I was a bit binge and purge. You know, I, my weight can shift by a couple of stone very easily <laughs> based on biscuits Sorry, and, just, and to say, just to say if you're listening outside of the uk a stone is a lot <laughs> <laughs> it's like what, what five is it is it kilos? like seven or eight kilograms something yeah something like kilos. that isn't it yeah. yeah 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 my weight can shift by 15 kilograms quite easily in a matter of mm. months and so why is that um in my emotional room i realized and now i think this perhaps comes from a lot of stuff we talked about um professionally it's always been about what's next how can we improve what's next how can we improve oh that was disappointing <laughs> shake off disappointment how can we improve how can we yeah. improve and that has an effect maybe on this chicken egg have i been trained professionally because i've always had to leave people for 25 years am i that way inclined anyway yeah a bit anxiously driven who knows a bit both probably but what happened emotionally is for me uh that room is only happy there's there's yellow balls with smiley faces on everywhere in that room and there's no sadness there Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that's not healthy yeah because basically i realized i i suppressed anything negative any disappointment Mm. uh, and just concentrate on what's next and and... yeah um which then leads to a spiritual room where i was described as what's your relationship to yourself i'm like i don't know yeah uh and so in the last 18 months particularly have really gone 
I need to check in more actually mm. uh, and you know allow myself to be sad allow myself to be disappointed and yeah. allow myself to acknowledge that other people their actions of uh, I've allowed to hurt me and, and mm. but we need to talk about it you know you didn't do this but I'm going to own it all we need to talk mm. about it um but it all starts with with checking in and then again you need space to do that and so for, for me uh, the way I do that is get in nature so we go for a walk each day mm. Sometimes I listen to a podcast or, or read it or listen to a book. I'm much better listening to books than I am reading them. It's just <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Um, try and do yoga four or five times a week and do some kind of physical activity. I love, yeah, hiking. Make, mm. Try and try and do something mentally, physically, uh, mm. and check in emotionally and spiritually on a, on a daily basis. And it's funny, you know, since doing that, I sleep more. I work less and I'm adding more value and I'm more productive on a daily basis, which man, if I could have really grasped that. In your twenties, how different would life be? Could you imagine, could you imagine meeting yourself 20 years in a a head of time and going, no, seriously, (laughs) do this. And but if you were not so th- black and white and so ego yeah. driven in your twenties that you'd actually listen to start with, <laughs> you know. But I was going to say you'd, tw- you'd meet your twenty six. If you, if I met my twenty year old self, my twenty year old self would not listen to my forty year old self. <laughs> yeah, I'd just be like, "Get behind me, Satan! What's wrong with you?" Do you know what I mean? It'd be that kind of response. <laughs> you <laughs> like, old tired man, is this what you've become? <laughs> you just talked about yeah. home furnishings. Why have you talked about home furnishings? You. <laughs> You garden? What? (laughs) So do you feel, right, with this sort of um, new approach where you're creating space, you're creating space to think and to be and to check in, do you feel a sense of guilt because you're not doing? Yes. Yes. So how do you deal with that? Um. So guilt needs to be investigated because you know where is it, where is it coming from? What mm. what is making me have to be the first in and last to leave? What what is making because some of it's personal responsibility and I'm trying to lead from the front and do the right thing, but but I think I realise there's other stuff driving it. Um, you know, and, and for me, I was like, I just pathologically have to fix everything and everyone <laughs> mm. and take personal responsibility for everything. Taking a step back and talk to a few people, that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where does that come from? Because well, actually this kind of nervous energy, this guilt, it's, it's just always there. It's like, I've got mm. this thing, I just need to do better and strive. And why do I have to fix everything and everyone? Why can't I like, because actually what that does in business or life generally is it creates learned helplessness mm. because people don't have to answer their own problems or, or self-regulate yeah, because Finch yeah. is doing it for them the whole time. It's, it's not helpful. Why? You know, and so you go really deep and you go, all oh, right, there's maybe a few childhood experiences that, that meant this is how I felt love. This mm. is what, this is what behavior was rewarded or what, what felt yeah. like it worked. And, um, you know, and I talked about suppression earlier and you know, like you actually, you know, most things get, get nailed quite early on. You mm. realize even with brilliant parents and a great home life and everything else, it's just certain things between your personality and your environment. And so I think being aware and being intentional is huge. And then when you are aware, uh, uh, going, okay, why does this feel more urgent to me than anyone else? Mm. Oh, because we have no money to pay the wages next week. Okay, fine. That's a normal level of urgency. But actually, no, there's something driving this. And actually, the the big shift to me was I was always going to feel guilty working less unless I shifted to a value-based mindset Mm. rather than a pounds per square inch of effort per second mindset, Mm -hmm. you know, and actually really tracking the value I bring to a conversation by planning it for 10 more minutes rather than winging it because I've been doing someone else for 10 minutes and and experimenting really, testing and iterating, failing forward, going, 
what if I didn't have to work harder, longer and more intensely than anyone else? What, what if I could trust myself that mm. the value I bring is actually better now than it was then? And actually, particularly with a comms lens, I mean, that was the next phase really is like, I know the value is good, but I'm not landing this. Yeah. And so actually I need to take more time to land it. And so being a bit more considered and just losing some of that kind of entrepreneurial energy, you know, what got you here won't get you there. You, you do have to operate and, and iterate. And I think that that tipping point of being less driven, maybe less guilt driven, where uh, that my, my sense of delivered value or even perhaps value of myself comes from effort and more mm. to to insight and direction and setting other people up for success it, it, and you know and and there's other things like it, it doesn't half help when you pay people better and there's bonuses and everything else yeah, you need yeah. some of that goes yeah. away but so it's practical things as well but i think it it's much more on a kind of personal level of, of giving yourself a break and trusting and then and mm. seeing the value you, you're giving and that that's that's been massive that sounds like quite a journey I mean, that you know, a <laughs> heck of a journey uh, that that you've that you've uh, been on there. And so, thinking forward a little bit, if I think about the more section, you know, push to be more, it's like, so you've you've sort of you've 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 grown. You've twenty five years. You've had all these challenges. You've learned over the last eighteen months, maybe, to create space to think and how to deal with the guilt and how to give people, you know, the space to shine. And you bring your value. So what does that mean for the future? What are you hoping to see more of grow into uh, over the next few years? Yeah, so for, we're on a journey, um, which this this whole year, 2022, was about some stuff we changed about our commercial model to be um, add more value to customers, but also protect ourselves a bit more and get, get more of an even keel over our revenue and our year-on-year -year growth. Um, this whole year has been about proving it out. And so far, it's been really successful. You know, revenue's up, profit's up. Best mm -hmm. year so far. So good. Mm. Um, we want to test that it's not just another good year followed by a, a fallow year. Yeah. Uh, and the ultimate test will be doing that going into a recession. So probably next year is going to be more of the same. Yeah. Um, uh, in terms of, you know, our internal phrases, prove it, prove it again. Uh, whether it needs to be proved for a full year or whether, you know, first quarter in next financial year we've got the whole year now in which case we go it's worked um but then the idea is that once we've proved the commercial model we'll scale the commercial model and our specialisms as is mm. just try and you know throw some throw some time resource energy some money and a bit more ambition a bit more drive to kind of grow the top line once we're certain that the bottom line is going to remain like a consistent margin yeah um once we've scaled it Sorry, scaled. Um, yeah, scaled it, which we expect to be organic, even if there's some investment to do that. Um, then the journey after that would be to scale us, because I think once we've really kind of proved that what we do is vital, it mm. works, people love it, we're serving them well, we scaled the business, then the next phase would be scale us, and mm. that would be where we uh, would look to acquire some new competencies to do a, a broader, more complementary. Set. Mm. So, and there'll be there'll be decisions to make. You know, yeah. right now we're we're growing organically a data and insight uh, team. Um, when we scale it, it might be quicker to just buy a data and insight team, bring them in, mm. um, and that that would kind of lend itself to the scale us world. Um, or it could be that there's a mix and match with the data and insight grows and UX grows, but actually we've got this huge commerce opportunity. Um, while we we nod to that and we, we do my accounts and, and, and any e-business, pure play B2C commerce is not necessarily part of our remit currently, mm. but is part of our tech and is part increasingly part of our digital estates for our clients. Mm. And so well, let's buy a, a commerce outfit and then we'll get their clients, we'll get their competency. And instead of mm. having to grow it organically over a couple of years, we, we can jump forward. It's it's like yeah. a first hundred days integration job rather yeah. than a two year. Yeah. So yeah, prove it, scale it, scale us. Um, that that's and to do that in terms of coming back to the core of this this chat is I need space 
to to flip from i mean I, we introduced me as ceo i'm still doing quite a bit of MDing, really but mm. that be that that real shift to pure strategic level is happening but mm. I'm, I'm still in the weeds and bits but we get to a place where we're we're growing at scale and I'm, I'm growing a team that can cope with scale like a growth officer and so on and particularly when it comes to an acquisition journey which might involve yeah. partners and finals i need to focus on that so and, uh, and and that needs space and time and yeah you know and meeting quite a lot of people and so it's actually quite business critical that but i do keep creating that space mm. um and so i'm feeling really confident in a minute but, but all the hallmarks are there that we get the system right and mm. setting people up for success that that will continue fantastic fantastic that sounds great doesn't it and it's one of those things where um you know when your business works really well when you're not involved in the detail that that's a really good thing but it's also if you're if you're marginally insecure it's going to be a really really painful thing to <laughs> deal with right and so um that's really cool man and uh, i hope that sort of all pays off so let me Thank ask you. you uh one of my final questions right as you know this show is sponsored by aurea media which specializes in helping folks like your good self set up and run their own podcast so i want you to do an imaginary exercise for me you've got your own podcast uh, Finch'sChats.com, uh, and out of out of the people who have the right people... Reverend Finch's Chats, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the right Reverend Finch's Chats. Uh, out of the people who have impacted your life, right? Uh, whether it's family, friends, authors, movie star, I don't know. Who are your sort of top guests that you would like? I really want to get you on the show and say thank you. Who would they be and why? Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Um, so Steve Bartlett might have already done all of this, bless him. But uh, you know, in terms of, I think in, ter- in, in over the recent eighteen months, I'd love to talk to Eckhart Tolle, who is the author of um, The Power of Now, okay. uh, and he's very much about being in in the present yeah. moment. Uh, um, when you're in a present moment, you have to be incredibly aware to be that um, because most of us flick from the past to the future. And, uh, and when you're in a present moment, that's when you can really engage with someone else, see their true self, be completely aware of anything that's going on in you. Mm. Um, but his story is fascinating in a you know, fairly dysfunctional growing up period. And then he ended up in a place that was quite suicidal and he had a moment ago, I, I don't think it needs to be like this mm. <laughs> uh, and actually took himself off a grid and I think went and studied in mm. B- Buddhist monasteries and so on. But, you know, he's, I don't mean he's a Buddhist. He, he's just, he, for me, he's a father of mindfulness. Uh, mm. uh, and, uh, uh, but that journey and understanding his experience and his unlocks with people, I'd be quite fascinated with that. And I'm, you know, bec- and I'm particularly interested but that has nothing to do with technology because that's actually my thing in mm. the, and I think I said this in the last time we met is that for this is the first time in human history where technology is not a limitation. People mm. are, mm. uh, technology can do anything you want it to do within reason now, yeah. um, but changing people is constantly the process of digging and digging and digging mm. what's driving that, you know, and I've hopefully been quite honest about, you know, being aware of myself, but you constantly have what's the agenda, what's the agenda, what's really making mm. you ask that question. What, um, you know, I have a values violation when it's really clear when a client or potential client, should I say, uh, <laughs> wants to look good rather than be good. Yeah. Um, you know, and I have like a massive reaction to that. But then part of that is like, why am I judging them like that? Mm. <laughs> you know, they might be in a political context where you can't afford to think of anything but looking good because that's, you know, and they're fighting their own battles and actually maybe I could bring some more grace into its situation. Mm. What can I learn from this? And, and, but technology business leaders, no one in my recent experiences is quite unlocked that nature of awareness and being totally aware of what's going on and when someone's being conscious and not and how you're responding to it for Neckot Tolle. Mm. Uh, it'd just be fascinating talking to him. Yeah. Well, when he comes on as a guest to your podcast, uh, I will definitely listen to the uh, episode. <laughs> Absolutely. <you> know. <laughs> 
Mate, you've been an absolute legend. If people want to reach out to you, if people want to get hold of you, um, we, t- we said earlier, didn't we, that Mando um, Engineers Positive Change. So if people need help with IT systems, if you're Absolutely. an agency yep. who wants to do some kind of strategic partnership with you guys, I know you do that um, on the IT 100%. side, right? Yeah, yeah, no, partnership's really, really key. Yeah, we often work with... Uh, Typically, we're with people who are maybe in a consultancy space or, or that front end brand space, but they need a, a technology partner that, that gets it, that can work hand in glove with them, who's on shore that you know we can work in partnership. And so, yeah, that that's a, a massive outcome as well as people that are going for digital change and, and need some support, not just on the technical side, but kind of translating mm-hmm. that to allowing marketing and IT to play nicely together. <laughs> Sounds ideal. Sounds lucky. Uh, how do people reach you then if they if they want to engage with such activities? <laughs> so you can contact me via our website, mando.agency, or indeed email me, ian.finch at mando.agency. Very good. Are you on LinkedIn? I am. Uh, and uh, I can't actually remember my I think it's Ian David Finch on LinkedIn. So I think, how dare it? But Ian Finch had already gone. Um, oh. so yeah, I think I'm in the end there. But you can search Ian Finch Mando on LinkedIn, and, and then you'll come up. Uh, you know, I, I answer those twice a day as well. Oh, do you? Uh, I'm still trying to get into that daily habit of doing LinkedIn. Uh, I'm not very good. Uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things. So we will obviously uh, link to Ian at Mando and to his LinkedIn in the show notes. So, oh, sorry, uh, Matt. There's one other thing actually. Yeah. I, I, I do a lot more of my kind of mindfulness and kind of outdoor pursuits kind of stuff on Instagram as well. So people can find me at Ian Finch uh-huh. on Instagram too. Well, you do some reels as well, right? Yeah, well, I was inspired reels. by you. I was yeah. like, yeah, I, I haven't quite got the kind of like the uh, the statements and the little insight bits, but they're, they're coming. But yeah, I like, I'm liking putting together with travel reels. Yeah, yeah. It's good fun. No, and I'm very envious when you get up in the hills. I keep meaning to call you and say, next time you go, give me a call, you bugger. All right, well, I will. I'll give you a shout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Let me know. Let me know. Well, thanks for coming on. But honestly, I, I love doing podcasts with you. You're an absolute legend. Always enjoy the conversation. So thank yeah, you brilliant. very, brilliant. very, very much. Thank you. So we will obviously link to Ian's info in the show notes, which you can get for free along with the transcript at pushtobemore.com. And if you're subscribed to the email, uh, then that will also go straight to your inbox. What a great conversation. What an absolute great conversation. Again, a big shout out to today's sponsor, Orion Media. If you are wondering if podcasting is a good marketing strategy for your business, do connect with them, orionmedia.com. That's A-U-R-I-O-N media.com and we will of course link to them on our podcast website to push to be more.com so head over to either it's totally fine you'll find them uh, be sure to follow push to be more podcast wherever you get your podcast from because this is just the beginning and what a beginning it was fantastic conversation to launch the show we've got lots of conversations lined up with some incredible people and i definitely don't want you to miss any of them and in case no one has told you yet today let me do it now you are awesome absolutely Uh, it's just a burden we all have to bear finch has to bear it i have to bear it you've got to bear it too (laughs) push to be more is produced by orion media you can find uh, our entire archive of episodes uh, on your favorite podcast app which currently is one Uh, but as the podcast grows uh, they will all be on there the team that makes this show possible is sadaf bain on josh catchpole estella robin and tim johnson our theme music is by josh edmondson and as i mentioned if you'd like to read the transcript and show notes head over to push to be more where you can also sign up for our newsletter so That's it from me. That's it from Ian. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a fantastic week wherever you are. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.